Hi, I'm Mike, and today I'm going to be giving a follow-up on the Supermicro 5018DFN8T. The Supermicro sure knows how to name their products. Anyway, uh, so I purchased this a while back, and I, I'll link above this, this video where I did the unboxing of this device and talked about the configuration. Uh, the, the gist of it is that I, I purchased a 512GB uh, SSD, uh, that's an M.2 uh, 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 drive internally and 16 gigs of RAM. And I basically am using this for, for a PFSense firewall. Now, I thought about running PFSense uh, directly, uh, bare metal on this device, but there were other things that I thought I would want to run in a home lab environment. Uh, and so uh, I decided to set it up in virtualize. I'm running VMware ESXi 7 on this device um, and basically I have one virtual machine uh, with four cores uh, dedicated to it for PFSense and uh, two other virtual machines, one the DNS server and another one a Pi-hole uh, DNS server as well. Now those, those services can both run under PFSense, I realize that but I wanted to have them separate mostly because I already had the virtual machines created and running uh, and so I didn't have to do any extra configuration, I could just migrate them to this host. Um, and I also wanted to keep that open for additional flexibility later on to run other network related services on this device because it has plenty of, of, of power for what I need right now. Now I mentioned already that the virtual machine for PFSense is, is running with four cores um, that's uh, the the CPU actually has four cores on it, but eight with hyperthreading. And I figured, well, with the the hyperthreading, that that can get scheduled in the cores that are available for it, and and that basically can be shared across the the other uh, the other uh, virtual machines that are running on this host. Now, one issue that I ran into when first setting up this device uh, was actually related to VMware. Uh, VMware has this strange bug when you're using uh, more than three uh, interfaces dedicated to a virtual machine. Uh, the numbering of those interfaces won't always match up with the order of the interfaces that you assign in, in, the, VM, uh, in the virtual machine configuration. And the way that I had to get around that was to actually look in VMware and figure out where um, which interfaces, what their MAC addresses were, and then match those up in PFSense afterwards. Which was a little bit of a pain, but once I did that workaround, it actually worked out really well. Now, speaking of interfaces, uh, this device has a ton of them. Um, and that was one of the things that really appealed to me, because I can really kind of uh, play around with different ne network configurations with this, and I have uh, plenty of entry points. Um, without using VLANs or something, which would be something else to play with, but, uh, but this I, I like having the physical hardware too. Uh, the first port I have is a, uh, a management port for the Supermicro device, um, and so that's its onboard management, so I can manage the server remotely. Uh, it has a remote KVM functionality in it and so forth. Uh, that's really handy. The next two I have, I have set up as WAN ports, and so right now I just have a single WAN connection like most people. Um, I've been playing around with the idea of bringing a second internet connection in though because I just lose, I, I need to have that internet in order to get work done. I'm losing money when, 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 the internet, uh, when our internet link goes down. Um, and so it would be nice to have uh, something where a fallback connection on WAN 1 eventually. Um, so I'm, I'm holding out on that, but, it, but at some point in the future I can see myself using that. Now the next row I have, uh, it's a VMware, uh, I'm using a physical interface that's separate for the VMware management uh, network, and so I have that coming out of the second port, and the uh, port that's uh, left over here for the DMZ. I'm not currently using a DMZ uh, on a, a separate physical interface yet, I'm doing that um, on a VLAN currently. Um, but eventually I want to switch that over to have a separate hardware for the DMZ network. In the next uh, column over I have uh, interfaces for uh, OPT0 and OPT1. 
Uh, I figure that way if I just need to plug something in and have it on a different subnet, that's really easy to do. And finally, I have two SFP Plus ports. Um, and those, uh, one of them, this uh, orange wire here is a uh, trunk uh, to the other two switches that I have. And that's running at 10 gigabit. Um, and then this port up on the top, I bought, bought a transceiver uh, to go to 10 gigabase T. Um, and I figured that's just nice if I have a device uh, that I want to plug into the 10 gigabit but doesn't have an SFP Plus port, um, that transceiver definitely comes in handy. I use that, for instance, in the ben when benchmarking this, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So um, overall, plenty of plenty of ports on here. It worked out really well. I used a label maker to actually label each of them, so they're all uh, nice and handy. Uh, to so I see exactly what's going to map to what uh, what port in PF sense. So um, now let's move on to benchmarks now. Uh, benchmarks were a little bit interesting. At, at first, it, they were disappointing to me. Um, I used, I just did a basic uh, iPerf 3 test on it, and the first time I ran it, I, I did it between these two 10 gigabit ports, and it was only giving me about a gigabit and a half of filtered throughput. I had two separate LANs, uh, the firewall was active and so forth, it, it was filtering between those LANs. Um, but but I didn't have any real rules set up. There was but it was doing filtering, um, and and like I said, that only gave me about a, a one and a half gigabits of throughput between those those lands. Now, that was much lower than what I was expecting. I, I was expecting something uh, closer between five and ten gigabits to actually going through. And I traced down the problem that it was only using a single thread when. Uh, routing packets between those two subnets um, and I couldn't figure out why until I did some additional research and, and determined that when using uh, VMware uh, virtual interfaces when setting those up by default they are not multi-threaded um, you have to actually go and manually edit a configuration file in PFSense to enable multi-threading for those interfaces. Um, I'll I'll attach down below the code that I used and the file I had to edit to to um, to make that change. I'll I'll add that to the description below. Um, but once I did make that change, the the speeds increased substantially, and so then I was noticing or, or seeing throughput between 3.8 and 4 gigabits per second, which was much closer to what I was originally expecting this to be. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be. I mean, sure, between uh, a land, a land network, I, I can be routing at, at 10 gigabit. That would be real nice to be able to do wire speed with that. Um, but that's, I mean, 4 gigabits, uh, for most practical purposes, is enough. Uh, and certainly when, uh, when looking between the LAN and the WAN, um, the 4 gigabits will be plenty for quite some time. So th this device definitely has uh, plenty of room to grow. So uh, it's then switching over to, to talk about IPsec performance, I have uh, uh, several VPNs to other uh, to, to boxes that I, I have uh, co-located at other data centers uh, as part of the work that I do. And so I maintain VPN connections to those boxes for security reasons. Um, I, the, I set them up just basic IPsec uh, connections and I did not test anything locally to another IP, a local IPsec host, um, and so I just kind of have to, to ballpark it here. But in my experiences, I was noticing uh, slightly over 50 megabits per second over the IPsec links that I, w I have set up, and it would peak out at about that. Now, granted, that's going over a, a, a remote network, and so uh, then I had to kind of extrapolate. So once when I was doing 50 megabits per second going out, it was using just over 10% of the CPU. Um, and so moving that out, if you're going to use a full full CPU on it, it you're looking at about 400 uh, megabits of, uh, of IPsec throughput on this. Now again, that's low, but I think that that's uh, single threaded again. And so if you have multiple VPNs, you're probably looking at well, in this case, four times that, and and be pushing more than a gigabit of throughput on multiple connections uh, on the VPN. 
So I do that. I also use OpenVPN uh, for my own clients connecting to the network here. Uh, that's been plenty, uh, plenty fast in my experience. I haven't benchmarked that separately though. So, but that's that's so far. That's my experiences that I've had with this box as a firewall. Uh, it's really worked out well for me so far, and I would totally recommend if you're looking for something that's going to give you a few gigabits of performance uh, on on a, a filtered firewall, um, have some room to grow if I want to do a packet inspection and so forth, uh, then I have still have plenty of bandwidth there um, that would more than saturate a, a gigabit link to the home, for instance. So uh, it's, it's a really great uh, setup for something like that. Totally recommend it. Easy to set up. Hardware was great. Have had zero problems with it other than uh, a couple of the, the software issues with VMware. Um, I, I, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend it enough. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Uh, click the subscribe button if you're interested in more of the, the work that I'm doing here in, in future videos. Thanks a lot for joining me this time. I'll see you in the next video.